Oh, I brought on a surprise guest, guys. I thought it wasn't <laughs> oh, no. fair if oh, we had let's a court, go. if I'm we had a court it. trial and we only had one of the participants telling their side. I didn't think it was fair. So we have here's what I have. guys. I want to stay within the context of the argument. We have a 2011 Jordan Burroughs versus a 2013 Kyle Dick in a folk style match argument. You guys, oh, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Tell oh, Kyle, just, what's up, bro? Me, I, I'll Kyle, shut up. up dude? Tell, you guys t tell your case, compelling as possible. Listen, here's we'll the deal. listen. Go. Number one, because of my success in freestyle, everyone just automatically dismisses my folk style prowess. Like I was just an awful folk style wrestler. I was just a late bloomer, bro. It's a difference between if you're looking at Kyle's career, you look at the entire catalog, you look at the longevity of it, everything that he was done, that he's done. You mentioned Kyle's career, you mentioned four national titles in four different weight classes over four years. And so that's what makes what he's done special. It's the totality no, it of his entire career. That's not it. What's what that? makes it special is the fact that I beat the returning Hodge Trophy winner. That's what makes it special. And I beat him three times. He's the most prolific point scorer probably in the last couple of, you know, two, three decades. That's Stop why it. that's why they give me the nod. It's impossible for him to be the most prolific scorer if I was <laughs> If, if I, we wrestled in the same Did era. Did you text bro. somebody in the NCAA final? Just because you don't text someone in the final. He wrestled Brandon Hatchett, bro. What are you talking about? Come on now. Let's be serious he's about he's like, what we're talking about. So many different times. I'm pretty sure he pinned everybody leading up to me. So let's think about how the match would, would So Okay, would so here's I mean, the deal. So All right, so if we're, if we're talking about that, if we're talking about the most prolific <laughs> score of the, in multiple decades – I wrestled, I wrestled Kyle, or I wrestled David Taylor in the finals of the U.S. Open that Wait, same year. Wait, did you wrestle right? him in so, both style or freestyle? No, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. But listen, listen. So you, you wrestled. Cradled you and put you, you on your back. No, that Not was the battle. following year. That was oh, the following okay. year. So, okay. So, in which I won both times, but, but anyway. So when you, let, so what you're talking about when you were further along in your freestyle career, not your senior year. No, no, I'm talking 2013. I'm talking 2013. Okay, that wasn't your senior year. You were a different person then. Okay, so so or, so we so basically you're saying that what what's guys' progression levels look like? I was best you because because of Ben's premise of what he said, he's explained that guys are best immediately after college, and then they get worse over they get worse as their career progresses. At the more time they spend out of college, that. the less success they have. So basically, he's saying that people that. are better earlier on in their career. That that was one simple uh, thing that I ran, not been proven, very simple math, but it's possible, it's not possible. But but here's the deal, so you wrestled Taylor in 2013, I wrestled Taylor in that final, I wrestled Taylor in the final in 2013. Yeah, I wrestled of Taylor course, in the that, final was, of the that was further away. It was, it was three weeks later, bro. Not for you, it was two years and three weeks later. Well, Jordan, assess if you can evaluate yourself as well as anyone. How does Jordan Burroughs 2011 go against Jordan Burroughs 2013? Because part of my point was, did did I felt like you were at that super super high level in 2011? Yeah, but it's two different styles. It's two different styles. Number one. So, but he wrestling's wrestling. At worse. the end of the day, wrestling's wrestling. So, if you look at your career, your final two seasons, you had two undefeated years, right? You were undefeated your junior year. You were undefeated your senior year. I was undefeated my junior year. I was undefeated my senior year. So we're just taking if apples for apples for our senior, junior, senior years in terms of who we beat, the type of catalog that the guys that we competed against, their credentials, the quality of wrestlers that we beat, everything is leaning heavily in my favor. Really? So David, like who, you, whoever you beat is better than David. No, no. I'm saying I'm saying both our junior, senior year. I told you I beat David in 2013. Yeah. I know that. That doesn't mean anything. You didn't beat him in 2011. But you're saying I was better in 2013. Better. Okay, so so when was I at my peak? What, let's say let's say if we're if we're that's saying when this peak. That's for you no, no, I'm 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 asking you this question because you're saying I got considerably better from college until 2013. So exactly when was my I'm peak? Not, I'm not I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying you're two so different when, wrestlers. So I was a better wrestler in 13 than I was in 11. Let's okay. Let's go back and watch any of your matches from 2011 to your freestyle to your freestyle matches in 2013. But that's not the point. The point is that you're a different competitor. Everyone evolves every single year. 
like me. I've okay, so how much evolution did I have from like, the time yeah, I graduated? Yeah, from yeah, God, to, I won the mind. U.S. Open. I won the U.S. Open weeks after, weeks after the NCAA title. I won the yeah. trials that year, which I believe you That's wrestled the in the trials that year. I, I wrestled in the trials. Then, yeah, I was 149 pounds. <laughs> that was your choice, bro. Yeah, well, you could have wrestled. I'll, 60, I'll you could have wrestled 66 kilos. You've always, you've always had, you know, you wrestled normal. Okay, here, this is what we'll do. I'll wrestle two matches or three matches in the morning of NCAA on Saturday, and then you sit out all day, and I'll wrestle you there. So we're getting into into okay. the sitting out uh, for the trials. I mean, here's my question: the, the, uh, If we're, we're hypothesizing about a wrestling match that would happen between you guys and Folk Style, so where where I think it gets really difficult is like Jordan Burroughs cannot have a win as good as David Taylor. It is impossible for him to have beaten David Taylor or anyone that good in, in college, and he beat basically his last. I two disagree. Years, everyone is. I disagree. I disagree well, because I believe. Andrew Howe, when Andrew Howe was coming off his 2010 season and was he was extremely dominant, yeah. he was undefeated. I went up a weight class. I was I came off of an injury. I came off an injury. I took an entire year off. I tore my LCL, PCL, came back, beat the undefeated returning national champ at a weight class above me. You beat a guy who had who had just gotten was beat, he wasn't the national or? champ the year You've before. Been in school for four or five years already. Who had been Is in school four or five years? You had. What do you mean? He was a he was a he was coming off his freshman campaign or sophomore campaign, wasn't he? No, yeah. he was coming off of a U.S. Open championship in 2010 and an undefeated national championship and a depleted season. Weight class. We can agree on that. So what do you mean depleted? It was we had Travis Paulson, Trent Paulson, both of the guys who were how many world medals at 74 had? kilos for for 